praise for all that you're doing. All we have to do is praise and release your glory. We give you thanks tonight for all that you're shifting and moving all across Central Florida. Father, we prophesy over Lake Mary that will be a righteous place to live, our honoring, uh, a place of honoring God. Father, that our churches, our homes, our schools will once again honor the name of the Lord. Father, we're asking that you restore the Ten Commandments back to our public places, Father. That we honor those who went before us, the forefathers in this land, Father, that honored your name, that those who came here for religious freedom, those who came here to worship in houses uh, unaffected by government and control, Father, we ask that you would restore us back to that nation, Father. Restore us back to that um, time, and Father, the the uh, the commitment of the heart, Father. We just ask that you would give us this freedom and liberty and justice for all. We prophesy freedom over America. We say liberty and justice for all. Father, we stand as a house undivided. Father, we stand in unity, believing that you have not abandoned America, but that you have a great destiny for America. You have a great destiny for your people. You have a a, a, a great destiny Father, for this nation to be a lighthouse to the world, to other nations. Father, make us lovers of God, not pleasers of men. Father, we come against those who steal, divide, and bring destruction. <clears throat> Father, we take our place in the Spirit right now, Lord. And we say we honor the Lord. Father, we hear, we see what is on your heart. We release it into the land we call out for healing your word says that if your that if my people or us father we're calling out will uh hear will will repent on behalf and honor the lord that you'll come and heal our land so father we're asking that you heal our land heal uh, us uh, and bring us into complete unity in jesus name Father, we give you glory and honor tonight. We give you glory and honor. Come like a mighty rushing wind. Come and let your spirit blow across this land once again. Like a fire. A revival wind wind of your Holy Spirit. Come like a mighty rushing wind. Like a fire and like a wind. Come like a mighty flame. Burning out everything that doesn't belong here, Father. Whirlwind, whirlwind of change. We usher in the kingdom of God to Lake Mary in Orlando, the I-4 corridor.
from heaven and I will hear I will heal the land. All you must do is seek my face. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. Humble yourselves and pray. of you tonight to heal our land. We repent and we turn from our wicked ways. To We turn towards righteousness. We ask that you come and heal America. Heal your children. Heal your sons and your daughters. Cause us to rise up to a new place. To take our heavenly authority that you've cre- created us as one new man. Completely joined with Christ that your arm would be extended, that we become your mouthpiece in the land. Father, this is the decade of the mouth. This is the decade of pay. Father, we open our mouths and prophesy to the north, east, south, and, and west. Receive your King. Receive King Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We build a place for you to rest, for you to come as an everlasting tabernacle with man, a place where we can always meet. You've chosen us before we chose you. Come like a fire and come like a wind. Come like a fire, like a mighty rushing wind. Come and clear the atmosphere over our land. Come and clear the atmosphere. We prophesy change to come. That everything is shifting and changing. your prophets from the mouth of heaven let the sound go forth let the sound go forth over this land breaking in breaking up every evil plan we declare righteousness and justice in this land remember the prayers of our forefathers and all the blood that was shed for freedom we stand here tonight with the great cloud of witnesses with all of heaven we stand and join with one voice one accord we declare unity and righteousness will come over this land and every evil plan will be exposed by your hand every evidence that's needed will be exposed by your hand 
the unveiling of that which has been corrupt and hidden will now be exposed quickly suddenly shine the light on the dark places expose the deeds of darkness darkness breaking open that which no one knew or saw will now be seen and exposed by your hand release your glorious light release your kingdom power release heaven against all those who stand against you Father, you said in your word that our, uh, that our warfare is not flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and powers. Father, we're asking that you send your mighty warring angels and tear down wickedness over our cities. Tear down wickedness in dark places. Release your glorious light. Take the blinders off of the multitudes of people. The ones the enemy has deceived. Father, we're asking that you have mercy, that you show your love, show your light. Come into those places, Father. We're asking for uh, millions of souls to be saved, to be healed, restored, reborn. Father, let tsunamis of revival sweep across nations. Father, your word says, can you save a nation in a day? And we agree with you tonight that you can save a nation in a day. It's not impossible because you are the God of the impossible. You've overcome everything, King Jesus. Nothing can stand in your way. You laugh at your enemies. You have even asked, why do the nations rage against me? But Father, you come in your love and your mercy. Come in your justice and righteousness. Restore honor and dignity and truth to our seats of government, Father. Destroy every wicked place, every evil scheme that the enemy has set up to tear down this nation. Father, we come into agreement tonight that America will be saved. America shall be a light to the nations. America shall declare themselves once again one nation under God. We only listen to the voice of God Almighty. Restore freedom, justice, and liberty to all. In the name of your mighty Son, Jesus. You are worthy, King Jesus. The only one in heaven and earth and under the earth. No one was ever found worthy to open the seven seals. There's none that have a a greater place of authority than King Jesus. We crown you with our crowns. We cast our crowns before you, King Jesus. We bow our knees and we humble ourselves. We ask that you move with your wind and your fire. Signs, wonders, miracles, thunders and lightnings. Father, release your truth. Release revelation tonight. Release the miracles. And we submit ourselves to you because we love you and you love us. We love your word. We love your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Thank you for joining us in worship tonight. Okay, Barbie's going to decree something. We're just going to go right into it right now, right? Keep the music playing. Just pick up right where you left off if you can. Father, we decree that everything that's been dealt under the table, every form that has been filled out, and every covenant that has been...
of violence, yes. over the spirit of deception, yes. and we dispatch warrior angels to go forth now into this land and around the world to begin to separate the wheat from the tear. Yes. And we say that they bind up the tear and they cast them into their own fires that they yes. have created of destruction. And we say that righteousness, holiness. That releases the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. Great sign and wonder will be President Trump. Will win this election. Right now, everyone that did hooded things in back room of deception, every assassination attempt that has gone forth, we turn those curses around and we send them back to those who would dare touch the anointed of the Lord. For your word says, give honor unto whom honor is due. Yes. And we honor President Trump and we thank him in this season of Thanksgiving for ruling and reigning in America in righteousness, in justice, and in truth, and for making America great again. Yes. Thank you, Father, that that Leviathan spirit is coming down. It's being exposed. The twisting and the turning. Thank you that mountains of media are being thrown down, the evil, wicked lies of the enemy, and that your truth is being released again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. We welcome you tonight. We're going to continue our worship right now by uh, giving. Uh, we always want to.
uh, and m make you aware also that uh, Barbie's book tables in the lobby. Don't forget to visit there. There's a lot of there's a wealth of information. She spent many many years, not only studying but writing as well. So there's you know you she might talk for one or two hours, but if you if you get the books, you can you know treasure them for a long time. You can actually study and receive more, much much more than uh, you can get in one or two hours. So uh, just please be aware that they're there. And um, next weekend, we have Chris Carter, Christopher Carter, joining us. Uh, he's coming. It's always a delight to have him. He's always uh, one of our favorites, and we just bless him. And um, we're still taking it real slowly to see who God's going to align us with next. And, and uh, so pray about New Year's. We still don't have anybody to do New Year's, but um, I know that it's going to open up. So... Uh, just pray with us and join us. Father, we thank you for every gift. Father, we ask you to move upon this offering right now and that you would expand it. And they, they've given. And Father, that they'd walk in many blessings, that new doors would open, that they would receive new keys and new a revelation, Father, that their eyes would be open, their minds would be open to uh, see things in the spirit realm. Their spirit would just open up, Father, and the, their their eye gate would uh, be open to see things in the spirit, like the sons of Issachar, to know what time it is, to know what the Father's doing, and then release that into the earth, Father. We just bring about a spirit of unity in this room that we would magnify the only one who is worthy, and that's King Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm just going to give it over to Barbie. I, I think you all know her by now, and we're delighted that you're here. I was hoping he was going to say I was one of the favorites. He, for t two nights in a row, he kept talking about that other guy. And he keeps saying he's one of their favorites. He said it, he said it several times. It, okay, I am the favorite. Okay. I'll share a little favor with the other guys, but for Pete's sake. Yeah, well, we had a great night last night, and... Um, the dream I had, you know, uh, I had several intercessors call and say that they felt the atmosphere in Florida shifted. And that's what we want to do. But the dream I had, there was a massive oak tree. I mean, it was huge. And it was fallen. And oak trees, a lot of times, will represent leaders. So last night, we started knocking down some big leaders. And with the tree, if you take the bark off, it dies. This tree had no bark. We had stripped the bark off of it. It was dry. It was uprooted, and it was laying there. And I was rejoicing, saying, Lord, thank you so much for that tree. And I started to walk away. And he said, no, you haven't finished the job. I said, oh, what, what do we need to do? He says, you need to get the snakes out of that tree. So I said, okay. So I walk up to the tree, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm strong. I'm fit. But uh, I've never lifted an oak tree by myself. <laughs> but I thought, you know, nothing's impossible with Jesus. So I went to that oak tree and I picked it up. I turned it upside down and I shook it. Three serpents came out. And I told you to go watch Vimeo where I'd cut the head off that one snake. Well, now there were three and these were big and he didn't let me cut the head off with a sword. I choked them. And those things opened their mouth with their little teeth in there, and they were, I'm like. So now we've not only uprooted the evil leaders, we have assailed the serpents that are moving in them. Some look, look like dragons. So, Father, we come against the principality of dragon, 
any serpent spirits, the Leviathan spirit that are behind this leadership that's turning a whole crooked, uh, deceptive government trying to steal America's freedom. And we say that you, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we say that we dedicate America to Jesus Christ. It is his land, his country. We give it to him. We humble our hearts. We pray. We say, Lord, it is yours. Rise up and take dominion of it. We give it to you because you have given it to us to rule and reign. And we submit ourselves to Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior over America. And we trample on serpents and scorpions, and we rip their heads off, and we rip their mouths open, and we stick our hands down, and we pull out their whatever, and we take them by the tail, and we whoop them. And then we whip them, and they better not touch us again. You know, we've got a mouth, so we've got to start speaking what we want. You know, God gives us desires in our hearts so that he can fulfill it. And I'm telling you, I don't look good in a burqa. You know, with your little eyes peeking out and everything else is covered up. And that's why I feel like this mask thing is the dry run for Burkaville. You know, I'm not into Burkaville. Our God reigns. And he's not afraid of anything. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And these minds of ours are used to create out-of-the-box things and to think and to imagine. And he says, I want you to begin to exaggerate things on my behalf. You know, we serve a God that can do the impossible, and he's so amazing, but yet we have a small thought of him. We can't even know him. How much did you put on that check? She goes, pardon? <laughs> we can't even know him until we step into the imagination of his grandeur. If we can just begin to start thinking about him and how powerfully awesome he is, he's going to take us past every limitation. He doesn't know what the word means, limitation. So he has great plans for us. Last night we talked about John 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. I mean, they're trying to release all kinds of trouble. Right. Trouble on our streets, trouble in our jobs, trouble in our church, trouble this, trouble that. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and again and again and again. Every time you go to sleep, God comes. He came last night and said, you didn't finish. I'm like, ooh, thank you for letting me know. I was just going to walk away from that dead, uprooted tree. And he says, no, there are three serpents in there. Shake them out. Cut their heads off. Stomp on them. Finish the job. See, the church starts something, but we don't finish well. We will start something, and then we shriek into fear. We think, oh, we better not say that because, oh, what happens if, oh, they might take down my Twitter account. I just signed up for Parlor today. Get on Parlor. I mean, if, they, if they, something, buddy, tries to close one door, God will open up another. We have got to be smart. We have to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves, and carry a big club. Get the Glock. If, that doesn't, if that's not big enough, get the bazooka. If that doesn't work, get the AR. Someone asked me, do, are you, do you really shoot? I go, yeah, absolutely. So I have all these little pistols. I put them on the little stand when I go to shoot. And I had an instructor teach me, so he put the target real close at first, and you shoot, and it makes a hole in the target. Then he puts it back a little further. He goes, now, shoot it through the hole. <laughs> so I'm like, mm, shoot it through the hole. He puts it back, now shoot it through the hole. So you get dead eye, and you hit the target every time. Because God has big goals for us. 
He's not a little God with a little goal. He's a big God with the big goals. And once we set a goal and we reach a goal, he, lay, he raises the mark higher. He says, see what you did? Now do something greater. Because he created us for greatness. We are created to do amazing, awesome, impossible things because Christ is in us. Think about that for a minute. The God who created the world is in you. When people always go, well, let me pray about that. I need to seek God and see what he thinks about that. I'm thinking, well, good Lord, just look in and say, what do you think? I mean, he's right there. He's not out there somewhere in the ether realm. He's abiding in this temple. And And the Bible says... If you love Jesus, he says, I'll tell my father. And the father and I will make our residence in you. Now, not only is the Holy Spirit in me, Jesus is in me, the Christ, the hope of glory, but now the father is in me. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, if the kingdom of God is within you and the kingdom of God is bigger than the universe... You've got some power packing product in there. You can do anything you can imagine. You are able, well able. He said, I will do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask, think, or imagine. See, when we get into the imagine realm, that's the realm of creativity. That's the God realm. That's when we are beginners. We need to tap into the beginning, basic level of imagining the grandeur of God. Then we take a step. Then we take a step. Then we start the 30, the 60, the 100-fold. I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty good. I'm 100-fold. He goes, you ain't seen nothing yet. Deuteronomy 11, 111 says that there's a 1,000-fold. So then I got all excited about the 1,000-fold. He said, no. He said, that just puts you into where I can bring you into fullness. He says, once I get you to fullness, then I can give you to overflow. Then I give you exceedingly abundant above that you have enough to sow into every good work. You have enough imagination to create, to design, to entrepreneur, to buy mansions, sell the mansion you're in, get into a bigger, better mansion. Because where you're dwelling, if he's not there with you, I don't want to be there. I want to be where he is. And he said, I've gone to prepare a place for you that where I am, you can be there too. So God is wanting us to move. And he says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I come again. So he doesn't leave us there. He comes and he makes a pathway for us. He is a spirit. So the spirit part of us can follow him in the realm of the spirit. Wisdom, communion, and consciousness of Christ dwelling in you puts you on the pathway to ascend into a higher place of revelation knowledge. He wants to share his divine nature with you so that you can apprehend the promises of God. Do you have a promise? Have you apprehended it? There's a way to get to that promise to where it begins to manifest in your life so it becomes your reality. He comes to you to show you the way. Doubting Thomas said, we don't know where you're going and we don't know the way to get there. That's what doubt and unbelief always says. I can't, I won't. Lay your hand on me. Just impart something to me. I don't want to work for it. I don't want to study it. I don't want to change. Just give it to me because I doubt it's a reality anyway. So I'm not going to focus on it and I'm not going to be able to do it. So you go into poverty. You go into lack. You go into sickness. You go into fear. Dis-ease or disease. And Jesus says, I'm not in those mansions. But we dwell there. God is coming in this era. We're in a new era, church. I'm tired of the old. I don't want it. I evict it. 
I refuse to dwell there anymore. I'm going to take on the image and likeness of God and be that. We are little gods created in his image and likeness. But we become a pauper thinking, all I need is a little crumb off the table. Oh, that's all I need. Let me get eat after the dogs. Well, God is so powerful, that little crumb is enough. But I want more than enough. I want the abundance. I want the creative realm. I want the prosperity. I want the blessing. I want the creative imagination to invent something. Patent it and make billions. You know, they have that song, or that, I want to be a millionaire. Well, let's be the billionaires. Let's finance the gospel and send it around the world. Where I go, you know the way you know. Did you know that he wouldn't tell you that unless it was truth? You know the way to ascend into the mansions because you're a spirit being created in his image and his likeness. When we allow our spirit man to ascend in us and we're not moved by our soul man, my mind, my will, and my emotions, when we stop allowing those to dictate who we are and what we can do, we will step into being spirit-led beings. When we're led by the spirit, we can apprehend everything of the spirit, which is wisdom, communion with God. We can commune with him. We don't have to go out and seek after him because we're just communing and we're talking to him and he's talking to us and we never leave his presence. We're practicing the presence 24-7. Even when we're asleep, he's coming. He's saying, I'm here. Let me show you what your next step is, what you need to do. Thomas doubted and said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going and so we don't know how we can get there. Jesus is the spiritual doorway and the gateway. If you don't like where you are, take the key of the kingdom, put it in Jesus, and step into him. He's in you, you're in him. The two of you are one. So you have the spirit that will lead and guide you into all truth. You have the father who has given you the kingdom. It's my goodwill to give you the kingdom. It has been given. We own it. But do we apprehend it? We have to learn how to operate in it. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father or enters into his mansions except through Jesus, who is the door. So in a mansion is that eternal state of being. You don't wait till you die to go get your mansion in heaven. I want a whole string of mansions. I want my summer mansion, my winter mansion, my northern mansion, I want one in the South. I want one in the Caribbean. I want one in Europe. I want to be able to travel in the spirit into every type of mansion that I need in a moment of time. Because if you can step into the realm of the spirit, you can be at a baseball game right now. Do you see the green? Do you see the diamond? Do you see the stadium? You're there. You can imagine it. You can be there in a second. Now let's go have some football. Let's go to a football game. Do you see the cowboy cheerleaders on the sidelines? I find myself, if I go to games, that's what I'm watching. I'm thinking, why? But I, I don't know if it's because I understand the whoa, raw, re raw, but better than I do the pass than hike thing. Or I'm thinking, if, now if I'd work out, I could look like that. <laughs> that's probably, I'm setting a goal. I'm setting a goal. Raw, raw, re. That could be me. <laughs> you know, I just don't know if I could get my foot up high enough to touch my head. You know. But anywhere we want to be, God gave us a creative imagination to be there. And see, God knows the finished end of something. He knows the end from the beginning because he's the alpha and the omega all at the same time. That's why he created time so everything didn't happen at once. Because if we start stepping into the realm of the spirit, a miracle is nothing but violating the natural laws of time, accelerating things into the future, apprehending it and bringing it back into the now. Because faith is now, so we release a now thing that comes to us through faith, and we move in great faith when we step into the faith of God. 
And he's saying, you, you can access God's faith. If your faith is not large enough, you don't have a big enough measure, leave it. Go, God, I need your faith. He said, I come to you. I've shown you the way. I've given you the kingdom. You have the keys. You have the power. Christ, the power and wisdom. And if Christ is in you, you have access to all of that. It's yours already. We don't have to beg. We don't have to borrow. We don't have to steal. Just begin to step into it and to release it. My thoughts and ways are not your ways. They are higher than your thoughts, higher than your imagination, higher than your ways and actions. So no matter how great we become, no matter how great America becomes, no matter how great President Trump comes, there's something greater that we can ascend to. God is not upset about us saying we're going to be great because the Christ in us is the hope of glory, and he is great. And he doesn't like being marginalized and being a, a seen as small or not for today or unable to do great things. That's an assault. So when Trump says all these great things, it doesn't offend me in the least. I think he's speaking as if he believes something true, great, and wonderful, and he's letting the Christ in him prophesy destiny and a big enough door that God can come in and do something. But yet a weak, wimpy Christians are going, oh, how offensive. I can't believe how prideful and arrogant he is. I can't vote for him. He's arrogant. He offends me. And I say, you ignorant, silly woman, ridiculous person. Do you not recognize the voice of God speaking through somebody in authority? Have you never had a godly example put before you of greatness? Oh, my gosh. People write articles. They pick out a Bible story. That means that he has been prideful and arrogant. Now he's being judged because of the democratic deception and false government and deep state assassination attempts. It's his fault because he speaks boldly. They don't read the Bible. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Be of courage. Be courageous. Do not be fearful. Be bold. Be confident. Church, wake up. Arise out of your slumber. Get on your knees. We need to repent. We need to take America back. We need to waken up and do something. Instead of going, we don't even recognize the day of our deliverance. Just like Jesus grieved over Israel. He said, can you not see that I'm the Messiah? I am here to save you. Oh, that I could gather you under my wings and love you. Can you not see that I'm here? He sent President Trump, the trumpet, the Cyrus, to open the double doors to give us back our freedom to speak from a pulpit without being arrested or losing our tax rights or any of that. He revoked the Johnson Amendment and he said, okay, church, arise. Do your stuff. Be the church. When the pastors go into the White House, Trump has to prophesy to them and tell them what to do because they're wimpy. They're afraid. It was the church who led the revolution for our freedom. But this church, we don't even recognize it. They're hiding behind three-piece suits, behind a pulpit, being weak and wimpy. And they go, oh, but if we say that, I might offend somebody in my church. Well, if you don't offend them now, they're going to hell. They're going to be socialist. And you're not even going to have a church because they're going to shut it down. Open your eyes. It's just like Saul on the road to Damascus. Damascus means destruction. Saul, taught by Gamaliel, the greatest teacher of the time. He's off there getting ready to go kill him some Christians. 
I can't wait. I've got my legal documents here from the government. I'm going to go shut down the church. I'm going to slaughter me some Christians. I'm going to do this. Isn't this wonderful? Because he's blind. But he's one of the religious leaders. Can't even recognize God's people. God comes on the road to Damascus in a great light on his Merkava chariot. Can you imagine being there and the Merkava chariot of God comes and light and angels and the wheels within the wheels and God is sitting on his throne on this chariot and he goes, Saul, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> oh, who are you, Lord? Are you, wow, you're something because you're in all this light. I don't know you. I don't know your voice. I don't know the way you move. I'm a religious leader, yet I don't know you. He's blinded. Little Ananias, the intercessor, knew God's voice. And God comes to him and says, I want you to go to Saul. Saul the murderer? Saul the blind guy that's killing the church? Saul the one that doesn't recognize real leadership? You want me to go to him? He goes, yeah, I've shown him your face in a vision. He knows what I look like? I thought you loved me, God. What are you doing showing my face to Saul? Okay, I'm on my way. He says, I want you to prophesy to him all the things that he's going to suffer for my name's sake. And I need you to heal him, and I need you to get those blind scales off his eyes. So that I can let him see what he's supposed to be. So he will do what he's called to do. And quit persecuting my church. God doesn't like it. When political leaders persecute his church. When religious leaders touch his anointed. The Bible says touch not my anointed do my prophets and my president no harm when they have tried to harm him and harm him and harm him and harm him the whole time he's been in office lord i call i call forth recompense i call forth restoration i call forth a multiplication back to him i call forth an easy path I pull down every mountain of opposition. I say every valley you raise up to be a flat platform. I say every crooked, deceptive place you straighten out now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over you and I command that it is going to be a smooth sail from here on out. When we believe our eyes are open to see. Ananias prophesies to Saul. Scales come off his eyes. He becomes Paul. One of the greatest apostles ever. There is redemption for the crooked. There is redemption for the deceptive. There is redemption for those who murder people in high places. Because we know they've done a lot of it in the deep state. But they have to repent. They have to turn from their wicked ways. Then their eyes will be open to see truth and they can be saved. That's the ultimate goal. But if they don't repent, they go to damnation. I don't care who they are or how much money they have. Because there's only one hell and one heaven and there's only one way to get there and that's through Jesus. He is the only door. You can't create your own. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? Is he in you? Are you letting him out? Are you testifying? Are you evangelizing? Are you winning souls? Are you healing people? Are you prophesying? Are you giving words of knowledge? Or is your Christianity private and personal? 
It's just an individual thing between me and God. I don't talk about politics. And I don't talk about my religion. It's just between me and God. The two of us and no more. When I get to heaven, I hope I have something on my crown to cast before his feet. Because I've never shared and told anybody that I'm a believer. Because I don't want to offend them with Jesus. What kind of religion is that? We've got to be bold. We have to provoke them to jealousy. We have to move in power so they can see he is alive. He is real. He is moving. In the beginning, in the genesis of the world, the spirit of God was moving. And he hovered over a void, dark body. And it says that the earth was formless, it was void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering, moving, speaking, creating over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. When the light came in the Merkavah, Saul's blinded, falls to his feet, has to be led by the hand until the light of revelation knowledge comes to him and his eyes are open to see. When God comes to us in dreams and visions and visitation and his word comes rhema to us and he writes it upon the tablet of a heart, his light has come and we become seers of the word, doers of the word, not hearers only. And see, the church has been wimpy because it's been a hearer and it forgets what he said and we don't even know what we look like. We look in the mirror once and we go, oh, I look pretty good. Woo! We walk away from the mirror and we forget our own image. And we become conformed to the world. And God says it's enough is enough. The bride needs to put on her wedding gown. It says that the bride has made herself ready. Are we making ourselves ready? He's been waiting for us for thousands of years. I feel like I've been waiting for thousands of years, but I'm not that old yet. He's been waiting for the bride. I want to be ready. I don't want to be a foolish virgin. I don't want to be without oil. And I don't want to be closed out and him say, I never knew you. Never knew you. You didn't spend any time with me. You didn't win any souls. You didn't do anything that it says in the Bible. You didn't stand up for me in front of people. You were a wimpy, shy, little, timid thing, and I don't, ha- I don't even recognize you. You can't come in. Or are you hot, passionate, fiery, seeking his face with all of your strength, all of your might? He said, if you will search for me, you will find me. When you seek me with all of your heart, I will be found of you. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Six days of moving, acting, speaking. And said, God is giving us a principle of working it we've got to learn how to work it six days set our goal this is what i want god this is what i want to do for you god i'm going to see the end result of it and for six days or six hours or six minutes or six years however long it takes your faith to be activated to see that materialized for all of us it's a different time period i'm into suddenlies i'm into the acceleration i'm thinking the older i get the less time i have so i need to learn how to do it by the spirit and quit doing it by the own strength of our own arm and our own talents and abilities. We need the suddenlies, the lightnings and the thunderings of God to set it in place, to see it so we can be it and do it and move on to the bigger things. Those who know their God shall do great exploits. Not little bitty teeny weeny, oh, I hope I can. Great exploits. That's why the world hasn't invaded the church. Because we're still doing the little. God says, let's do the great. Build me a platform where I can come. I want to do the great things. I want to show myself strong on your behalf. It says that the eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro throughout the whole earth. Seeking for those whose hearts are totally towards him. We emptied out our heart tonight in prayer. 
as we sang in worship before him, we said, empty out my heart, Lord, and fill it with you. Get rid of all the junk out of our hearts, Lord. All the icky stuff, all the sin, all the pornography, all the theft, all the doubt, the lies, the whatever gross stuff's there. Empty us out that our hearts can contain more of him. He worked for the six days and he entered into rest. It's done when you're entering into rest. Now you just rest in it. You have become that which you saw. You've taken on the image and likeness. Now you just walk it out. You rest in it. You do it on the seventh day. Seven is the number of God. So he did it. Adam met God out of that spirit of rest. John 3, 1 through 5, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he didn't want to be seen. I'm just going to sneak me some Jesus. I hope my friends don't see me going to church all the time. What will they think of me? They won't invite me to the parties anymore because they'll think I'm one of them religious people. A goody two-shoe. I'm going to sneak me some Jesus. And Jesus says, unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born of spirit and water, you can't enter my Father's kingdom. It says the wind of the Spirit acts. It moves, it blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound, my sheep hear, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? And Jesus asked Nicodemus, he says, are you a teacher of Israel? And you don't know these things? If I had told you earthly things and you don't believe, how can I tell you heavenly things? Jesus is in heaven. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit connects us. Holy Spirit is in you. The Father is in heaven. The Father is in you. So there is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. We are totally encapsulated in God. We can ascend into the heavens to see what's going on there, bring it back just like Enoch did. Enoch walked with God and was no more. They didn't recognize Enoch anymore because he was transformed. He was transfigured into a new person because he was in God's presence. Every time we're in the presence of God, we are changed from one level of glory to the next. We become a new creation in Christ. We are brand new. And we know that all things work together for good. Did you know all things is a being? It's a being. It's a heavenly spiritual being. The problem is all things means the great, wonderful, positive, blessing things that we love. Oh, I love you all things. But it also means the loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, a career. The sad things, the bad things, the ugly things, all things. And the problem is we have to have both. We can't have all the great things. I love that part. <laughs> I could hug onto that all the time. Bless me, yes, love, abundantly above. All things that I want, wish, or desire. But I also have to embrace the loss of a sister, a loss of a brother. A loss of a precious pet, loss, death, destruction. It's all part of life. Those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose, all things work together for our good. And so we can't say, God, I only want one thing or the other. In Genesis 9.3, it says, I have given you all things, and the Lord has blessed you with all things. We encounter all things who is tangible. We can encounter all things we experience. Dreams empower us to be renewed by the spirit of our mind so that we can put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness, Ephesians 4. Have you ever asked God, why do these things happen to me? Why does that have to happen? Why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to go through that? See, the problem is when we focus on something and we say something, we're creating doorways. 
In Hebrews, it says that the worlds were framed by the word. Why do those things happen? Because we have thought them, focused on them, imagined them, spoken them, or we were judgmental and critical over somebody else who was going through that thing. We judged them. Oh, look at them. I can't believe they did that. Well, we just created a doorway because we spoke it and we criticized and judged and we released a curse. Then we get to walk it through. We get to walk it out. Good people, but we made a mistake. That's why God's putting a, a muzzle on our mouth and saying, speak forth blessing. Don't speak forth the curses. Curse causeless cannot alight. But he also says that he wants to release vengeance against the enemies of God. So there is a time when we have to execute authority for those who are trying to destroy the kingdom of God. Sometimes I wish I was back in the time of David. You know, they go, God, should we pursue and get all the loot and the booty and everything else? Yes, pursue. You will receive it all. I'm like, yes, good. Give me the horse. I'm going out as Joan of Arc. I'm going to win. I'm going to get it all. So we have to, you know, I, I think that's why I live in Texas, so I can have the guns and the ammo. And it's like that Rambo person in me. <laughs> you know, I'm waiting for the revolution. So I practice. I can shoot through the hole. I'm, I'm ready in season and out. Joseph the dreamer had coats of many colors, the seven spirits of God. And see, the seven spirits of God take us out of the gifting level and move us into the office level where we release the reverential fear of the Lord across a nation. I was so proud of Trump the other night when some smart aleck newscaster was giving him grief and he said don't talk to me like that I am the president of the United States and I'm like hoorah and I would have continued if I had been the president and I'd say and by the way pick him up and get his butt out of here I'm sick of looking at him that would have been my second statement that's probably why I'm not the president but it, the, you know we can change things through prayer, through decree, through prophecy, and it's time that we do that. Night and day, night and day, when we see something they do and say we don't like, we reverse the curse. We say it's not going to alight. We send it back to you. That is your portion. And Lord, thank you for the blessing. We prophesy the exact opposite. We begin to make the doorways in Hebrews that we create a world for the king of glory to come in and through so that his kingdom comes, his will is done on earth, this earthen vessel, and my whole domain where I rule and reign. We rule. We reign. If we could mobilize the church and the 28 million who didn't even bother to vote, we, they would seek after us and go, what, what kind of things would you like us to create? Because we know you're the biggest voting block there is. Would you like this product? We want to do this. What kind of movies would you like us to do? We would dominate. But we won't even engage. That has to change, church. We have to become activists for the kingdom and step into our authority. Seven colored coats, that represents the mantle of imagination, dreams, and interpretation. Throughout Joseph's transformation process, he had many garment changes. So one of the reasons I'm bringing Joseph into this because last night I mentioned a dream that I had. Oh, dear Lord, help us. It was a dream that I had. I'm just saying it again for emphasis that I had sent my clothes ahead of me to a church who dry cleaned them for me in a dream. It wasn't a real dry cleaner store where I owed them an actual real bill for their services they had rendered unto me. 
This was a parabolic, metaphoric dream situation. And in the dream, the cost for me to regain my old clothes that I had already worn was more than it would have cost me to go shopping. And we talked about the virtuous woman shops till she drops. But the person who misunderstood obviously didn't understand that part either. Virtuous women pay their bills. So I had a choice. Pay an exorbitant amount for my old mantles I had already worn or buy new that had never been used, never been worn before. What choice did the Spirit of God want us to do? Go into the old thing? Keep the old worn out mantles? The stinky B.O. mantle? No. I'm not paying you an exorbitant fee for something old and used. I give them to you. You use them. So it was not, again, an actual cost, the bill that I refused to pay because they said I was a sinner for not paying my bill. I am not a sinner saved by grace. I'm a saint. So I chose not to redeem old, worn-out mantles. I'm making it elementary so you can understand out there. I decided to pay for the new. Behold, all things have become new. We put on new garments. Joseph wore a new robe. For the imagination, the seven colors of the spirit that took him out of gifting level into the ruling kingdom level of authority. Where the God dimension is. Every time a mantle was stripped from him, the impartation was already in him. Take my robe. Take my old clothes that I'm not paying you for. In the dream. In, in the dream. Give me all the new. I want the new impartation. Then you can strip me of a robe if you want. Because it's not on the outside of us that matters. It's not the appearance on us. It's what's in us. The Christ in us that is the hope of reaching glory. Thank you, God. God was with Joseph everywhere he went, whether he was in the pit, whether he was slave in Potiphar's house, whether he was imprisoned, God rose him to the top. Wherever you are, you should be the top. You should be the head. You should be the boss. You should be the one in authority. You should be the one making the rules. You should be the one telling people what they should do. They should be coming to you because you're a believer. And the spirit of wisdom and counsel and might and the reverential fear of the Lord and knowledge dwells in you. So why would we shrink back? Why would we hide out? Why would we keep our mouth silent when we have the answer? He rose to the top everywhere he went. And finally... Another robe change, shave that old beard off, he goes to the palace. That's where believers are called, into the courts of kings, into the White House, into the presence of presidents and first ladies. That's where we should be sought after and brought into because they can share any enigma, any problem, any mystery, and the Holy Spirit within us can interpret it. We have the answer. We have ears that hear, eyes that see, and a mouth that speaks forth creativity. Anything we can imagine we can be, we can do. There are no limitations. If we decree a thing, God himself that is in us, around us, and above us said, I will establish it. 
I love just to go on walks and decree and see how quickly it comes on on every wave because I've cast my bread out on the water and I said, ooh, God, I hope a big fish grabs it. <laughs> Let me see it come back. I don't like to eat fish, though. So maybe I should. I like dolphins. <laughs> Slavery. Prison to the palace, out of the pit. Every mansion or state of being in the father's house has new keys, new clothes that you don't have to pay for after dry cleaning. In the dream. Mantles and anointings, glory realms, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, all things that we need to fulfill our destiny call. Then they will call us amazing. Our God is amazing. He'll heal the sinner. He'll heal the prostitute. He'll heal the fortune teller. I was in Hong Kong. Taught 250 or so people on dream interpretation. Well, for our activity, they rented the psychics booth downtown in the prostitute quarters. So we take 10 of us maybe. Barbie's the leader here, blonde hair in Hong Kong, so I kind of stood out. I'm tall, they're short. So we're all in this, we're in the psychics booth. She's a tarot card reader, third generation. Her mom was there, she was there, and the, they tarot carded before then. So I'm th I wasn't thinking, and so I'm going, okay, we've rented it, you go home. And they go, Barbie, why don't you give her a word? And I go, yeah, why didn't I think of that? Why don't I give you a word? So she sits down. And the Lord began to read her mail. He began to tell her the sickness in her body and the disease. And, but before I started, I, re I said, let me hold your hand. Because people who are in the occult have lots of demons in them. And when, they start, he, when the Holy Spirit in me starts coming out and touching them, they're going to go into a trance. Then they can't hear a thing I'm saying. So I'm not going to talk unless I'm heard. So I'm, I said, hold my hand. Now I'm in control. Because greater is he that is in me than that demon's in her. I'm holding the psychic's hand so that she can't trance. And then I start giving her words of knowledge, and I'm releasing healing into her body. And I'm telling her name. And I'm telling her about this and that. And I'm saying, there's a person who loves you. He's a lover of your soul. And he doesn't want you suffering with migraines. He doesn't want you having an irritable bowel syndrome. He wants to heal you. Do you want to meet him? Tears. Yes, she wants to meet him. I said, his name is Jesus. Pray this after me. She gets saved. She goes and gets her mom, first generation psychic mom. Mom comes in. Give her a word. Hold my hand. God says that he sees you as a songbird, and you're like a beautiful rose to him. <gasps> My name is Rose, and I love to sing karaoke. Well, did I know that? No, I didn't know that, but Holy Spirit knew it. And the Lord says he's healing the pain in your knees so that you can dance. I love to dance. I'm going, yeah, well, you're in the bar. You're karaoke. Probably dancing goes with that. <laughs> she gets saved by the lover of her soul. We've got to go invade darkness. We've got to take dominion. We've got to release the love of God to them. The guy in the booth next to me, all the single ladies were there because he was going to tell them who they're going to marry. And so I was like, hey, psst. come over here. He had rows of single ladies there. So I would speak to one single lady, tell her about Jesus. He's the lover of your soul. She'd get saved. She wanted Jesus. Of course, Jesus is perfect. You know, it's not hard to sell Jesus. She cries. Men came in. We, we stole the show, and we got salvation after salvation after salvation in the prostitute quarters where the tarot card readers and the psychics hung out because light came into dark places. And we shined the brightest there. We don't need to be afraid of anything. Nothing. 
Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word this is, for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. I love casting out demons. They, they make all kind of noises. They say, No, I'm not. I go, Yes, you are. I said, Don't make me hurt you. I know you're in there. I was in Suriname, South America one time, and they dedicate one of their kids to be possessed, to channel things through that child. And that kid grows up deformed, weak, sick, and firm because he's housing lots of demons. Well, we got to minister to some of those to set them free. And their eyes, not only, sometimes people's eyes will roll back in their head. His spun this way. And he, it was so funny because he would think that was going to scare me. So he'd do his eyes, you know, counterclockwise. And I'm laughing because I'm thinking, I wonder what's happening to his cord, you know, that your eyeball has this cord in the back. And I'm thinking, is it, is it spinning and tightening up, you know, twisting back in there? He was doing his best to scare me. And my mind's thinking, I wonder how, I wonder how that's working for him. And so he'd spin his eyes, and then he'd look at me again. i go, still here. (laughs) Come out. In Jesus' name. I know you're in there. I can see you spinning around. (laughs) You're driving yourself crazy, not me. (laughs) You know, it becomes a sport. And it was like, I want to see how many I can get. And they'd come to the altar, and I'd think, I'm just going to go out there in the middle of them. And I'm just going to touch and speak and rebuke and cast out. They were falling. They were throwing up. They were writhing like snakes. They were screaming. They were hollering. And I was like, yeah, take that, demon. Take it. (laughs) Jesus sent out the 12. And he called his 12 disciples together. And he gave them all power and authority over all demons to cure disease. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We are invincible. Shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of righteousness, belt of truth. I mean, we've got the state of art Tony, what's his name? Stark, Iron Man suits. <laughs> I was in Michigan at Barbara Yoder's church, and seven angels, boom, 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 boom. You know how Tony Stark's movie, he makes this grand entrance, you know, they through the sky. It was just like that the angels came, boom, 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 boom. I thought, yeah, I like that. When I called David and Rhonda, I said, do you have any way to fly me in? They go, yeah, we'll get you an airplane ticket. I go, no, 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 I'm talking about on stage. I said, I I just want to be dramatic and make a grand entrance. I mean, Tony Stark does it. Come on. Why can't we do it? But to those who are called, both the Jews and the Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 24. The power of God dwells in you. The wisdom of God dwells in you. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration and of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 4, and 5. And that's where we are, church. It's time for us to demonstrate The wisdom and power of God to speak into the government, to tell them what they can and can't do, to pray, to unify one nation, one body of Christ, the bride making herself ready. We rule and reign and take dominion. We're not told what to do. We say what to do. We make the laws. We make the decrees. And God himself establishes it. There has to be a turnaround There has to be a turnaround. There has to be a wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. The awakening has begun. It's here. When they're saying stuff on the news, decree the opposite. Decree it. I've got several of the newscasters fired. 
just by decreeing a promotion over them. I got sick of hearing them. And I, they would irritate me. And God goes, why are you mad? I go, but look, listen to what she's saying. She's kook. He goes, well, don't get mad. You'll, if you get mad, you come under the same spirit thereof. He said, just decree a blessing over her and I'll move her. I said, move her. Bless her. Prosper her. Increase her. Move her somewhere that I don't have to hear. By the time I flew from Texas to Miami, she had been replaced. She was gone. <laughs> it works. Nothing is impossible. All things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe, your eyes open to see. If you can see it, you can be it. You focus on it for the six days. You enter into the rest. You put on the robe or the dry cleaning that you didn't pay for in the dream. <laughs> and you put on the new and you become it. We are all new creations. You are not the same person you were when you walked through those doors. Because the spirit of truth has come to set you free from whatever had hindered you. What are the dreams that you had dreamed that you let go? Oh, that can't happen. I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that. No, you're not. You're perfect for it. Dream again. He's coming to you to bring you to the mansions that he has already prepared for you. And if he has prepared them for you, he's going to show you the way. And the way is through the Spirit. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And the, if you don't like the life that you're living now, have another thought. Create another life. You can dream the impossible dream and the Christ who is in you, his greatness, the kingdom of God that is within you will cause it to manifest if you will focus upon it. If you will see it, you can be it. You've just got to believe that whatever the word says, whatever the word of God says is true. And we've got to begin to decree it in the year of the mouth. Prophesy your new promotion prophesy your new increase in payment prophesy they're going to give you back payment prophesy whatever you're thinking you need and want begin to imagine greatness and don't let people say that because you're confident in christ that you're arrogant or prideful if they say that just go <laughs> little do you know and walk off i don't receive that you know, he said that they're ignorant people. You can't help an ignorant person. They have to want change. If somebody wants to change, they can change. And nothing's impossible. But if they don't pursue God, if they won't study God, if they won't study the gifts that God has given them and learn how to activate them and use them, there's nothing you can do by laying hands on them. God is not magic. He said, study to show yourself approved of God a workman worthy if you're not in the word you're missing out the word will renew your mind it will give you creativity it'll open a door large enough that you can step into it and big enough that God himself can come and inhabit you I want less of me and more of him one day I read a scripture that said, every time I turn my face towards the Lord, another veil is removed. And I thought, that's it. I want, get rid of it. God, I'm intentionally thinking of you. I'm turning my face to you. Remove this veil from me so I can have face-to-face -face encounter with you. And I can feel the kisses of your lips upon me. I can feel your embrace from inside and around about. That I am so encompassed within you that I become you. And you become me. And then I dream your dreams of greatness. And you resurrect in me. And the hope that resurrected you, the power of the resurrection, Christ from the dead, dwells and resurrects in me. He resurrects in you. And he does things. He ascends. Jesus ascended. But he also comes again. And again. There's not just one second coming. 
That would be horrible if we had to wait for that one event for him to come. He's coming every time we remove a veil, every time we turn our face, every time we go to sleep, every time we cry out to him in prayer. He is there. He's hearing every word. It says, his word is so near, it's even within my very mouth. Speak his word, and the power of Christ in you will work it. Work it. We've got to have fun. Jesus loves to laugh. He's a punster. He likes to tell jokes. He, t- he t- cracks me up. He is amazing. He's not a religious person at all. He, but he's perfect. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Although he comes in thousands of different ways. Did you know that the Christ in you is going to manifest different than the Christ in me? And when they, they would have never crucified him had they known that now there's going to be millions of little Christ and millions of people, and they were mobilizing an army of Christ to come forth on the earth to do the greater works exploits for this time. It's time that we let Christ out to do whatever he wants to do through me and you. Amen. Barbie is simply an amazing teacher. She's our absolute favorite (laughs) guest speaker. (laughs) Our very, very favorite one. Thank you for visiting us little hobbits down here <laughs> with the hairy ankles and the ha- hair on our knuckles and stuff. You know. No, I just get that picture every once in a while. Sorry. Uh, no, we want to sow into Barbie's ministry. We want to uh, just g- be a blessing to her. Um, she has an amazing ability and, and invitations all over the world to speak. But, um, you know, she's always been a dear friend. And uh, I just, I, I, how many received something new tonight? You know, there's, there's some revelation I'm getting because she's, she's really like provoking me to finish a book, at least get one done, right? I, I'm, I'm really good at starting things. And then somehow they get put on the side. So she's uh, even had an editor calling me now. <laughs> so that I have not even met yet, but she's calling me because she wants me to turn in some material. So um, I, I love that about Barbie. She's going to provoke you to go to another level, you step into something you've never done before. And I've watched her come a long way ever since, what, 2001, I believe we met. And so um, anyway, let's sew into her tonight. If you'd like to give by credit card, please raise your hand. We have ushers ready to assist you to give you a go on our website glorifierchurch.com click on the donation button we will make sure she gets it uh, before um, the end of the weekend So, uh, yes, again, I'd like to um, mention the product table. There's books back there. There's a lot of resources that are available that you can continue to study and press into. I like the way she encourages us to to continue to stay in the word, to study and become, you know, more knowledgeable and step into what we're called to do. And... um, She will be doing a book signing tonight. If you'd like to purchase one, uh, she will sign your book, and it'll be a blessing to you. Bring your gifts, your offerings forward anytime you're ready. Remember, um, uh, one of our other favors is Chris Carter's next weekend for Friday and Saturday. Not quite as much as Barbie, but he is a favorite, you know. No. Awesome. And so... um, 
it, we're just anticipating a great new year, and and uh, and as we come into this Christmas season, we're going to see a big turnaround. We're going to see many miracles, and uh, we just want to see this place packed out again, and uh, the family of God reunited, and everybody worshiping together, praying together, and um, and studying together. So we bless you. Father, thank you for this weekend. Thank you for the impartation that we can receive. We don't have to have hands laid on us by an individual, but that you come through your Holy Spirit and impart and open doors. Give us revelation that we could never even receive otherwise. It's by your Spirit. And so, Father, we, we just ask that you would continue to impart and open up uh, windows of revelation, Father, as we sleep. As we meditate, as we study, Father, you said that you are a rewarder of those who diligently press into you and, and seek you out. So, Father, make us all uh, those who are the seekers, the, the deep ones who 